So I'm getting a fire going because it is cold up here. My dad is out of town. Typically, um, when he's up here, there's always a fire going in the shop and it keeps it nice and warm. But right now it's cold. It's probably around 40 degrees in here. So I'm going to get it warm and uh, I'm going to do a little bit of prep work um, on this John Deere B engine before we put it together. Okay, so in the last video I showed you, we picked up all these parts from the machinist. And before we start assembling stuff, there's a couple things that I want to do. First of all, you can see uh, they put new connecting rod bushings in here. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, not connecting rod, but wrist pin bushings in here. And you can see down in there, there's this oil passageway that goes up here from the wrist pin all the way down. Can you see that? All the way down to the rod journal. When they start machining things, I want to make sure that there's not any sort of uh, metal shavings that fall down and get inside this oil passageway. Otherwise, on first startup, the very first oil that comes up this connecting rod to the wrist pins is just going to blow out a bunch of shavings, metal shavings, into, into your fresh, freshly machined uh, surface there. So I'm going to use some carburetor cleaner and just spray that out. And I'm going to see if I can capture any debris, if any debris comes out of this hole right here. There. Hold that there. Let's see if we can catch any debris that might come out. And then in this end, we'll go ahead and we will squirt a good amount of carburetor cleaner. Okay. Now let's see what That's pretty good. Nothing came out. We can also, after I blew it out with carburetor cleaner, I was going to just blow it out with compressed air too. But I'm glad that, uh, that we're not finding a bunch of metal shavings in there. That's good. Okay. I'll do the second one. Now I want to turn my attention to these pistons. So on the last video, I noticed that this chamfer was on the bottom side of this bottom ring. And I thought, is that correct? And I looked online and sure enough, they talked about, you know, how this bottom ring, the chamfer is supposed to be down. And I think that's supposed to help in wiping oil away from the walls of the cylinder. But then I was also looking and I don't know if you can see in here, but for example, on this one, let me get my flashlight. On this ring right here, you can see that there's a chamfer on the inside bottom corner. Now, if you look at this third ring down, you can see on this one, the chamfer is on the top inside corner. Now we didn't put these piston rings on. The, the person that works at the front end of the machine shop, the one who runs the cash register, he said, hey, I put the piston rings on for you. And we said, well, did you put them on right? And he said, yeah, if they're not on right, it's my fault. Well, I don't think they're on right. And as I dug a little deeper, you can see, you know, there's always a dot or there's usually a dot on the top of the piston ring. And you can see right here, there's a dot on that ring. And let's look on the bottom ring. Yep, there's a, oops, can you see that? Sure enough, there's a dot on this ring right there. Well, on this piston ring, the one that has the chamfer on the bottom inside, the dot is on right here. Let's see if you can see it right there. Oops, it's not in, it's right here. You see that? So this second down piston ring is on upside down. So I've got to fix that. And then this top ring, or this top piston, or top ring, I don't think that that one matters. I don't think that it has any geometry. It's just a square, a square ring, and there's no little dots on the top or the bottom of this one, if you look. So... Yeah, it's good. 
But, so on this piston, I've got to fix one ring. Oh, let's check the oil ring. I don't think it, I don't think it matters. I think it's just on those compression rings. Yeah, nothing there. So I've got one ring I need to fix on this, on this piston. Now let's check the other one. So this piston as well, probably can't see, but right here on the same ring, that dot is on the bottom side. So I got to flip that same ring over on both pistons. The number two piston ring needs to be flipped over, which means I got to take the top compression, pist top compression ring off as well. So let me fix that. So you can see I've now flipped this second ring over. Now you can see the dots there on the top. The third ring, the dot is on the top. And the fourth ring, the dot is on the top. Now I just got to go ahead and put this uh, top compression ring back on. Here's a tip for you. Uh, we, I don't have a ring extend, like expanding tool. So what I do is I just make a tiny little block of wood like this that's just the right size that I and I wedge it in here and it holds the ring open just wide enough that it fits over the top of the piston until I can get it down in the groove. So this is what I, let's see if I can do this on camera. about there. I hate doing this. I'm always worried I'm gonna break a ring or something. I never have, but still don't like it. Okay, there we go. There's your uh, super cheap and uh, pretty effective ring expanding tool. Now I'll do the other one. Okay, here's the second piston. I'm doing this more just for my own documentation so that then if I, when I question myself, I can see that, yep, this one, the dot is on the top. You can see it there. This one, the dot is on the top. And the fourth one, there it is. The dot is on the top. Okay, everything's good. With the piston rings fixed now, we can go ahead and put the attach the pistons to the connecting rods. So, of course, as you know, you got to make sure that the top of your piston here lines up with the top of your rod. So it's indicated top there. You also have that vent. I think it's for oil to enter into the um, into the cylinder. And then on your rod, right here, you've got. Typically, you have numbers. Can you see that right there? Number two, number two. So that's the top of your rod. So this is the top of piston rod number two. So I just need to make sure that the top of my rod lines with the top of the piston. It's pretty simple. Self-explanatory. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put one of these clips in one side. Then I can just push the wrist pin in and it'll bottom out against that clip. Let me, grab a, let me grab a pair of needle nose. Okay. There we go. Okay, there it is. Seated nicely in that groove. Now, here's the top of my piston top of my connecting rod. Oh, also, assembly lube. You can use grease, or I mean not grease, you can use just engine oil if you want, but I like to use assembly lube because it has a little bit more, a little bit more, uh, what do you want to call it? Zinc and molly to help with the break-in. So this is a brand new bottle. Put some of this on that connecting rod bushing right here top 
number two. It's kind of gooey, but that'll be good during break, during uh, first start. We want to have make sure that we have a lot of good lubrication down inside of here. Okay. Okay. Now there's the top. Slide it in there. And I'll put a little bit of assembly lube here on this wrist pin. Okay, now let's start this. It is just a perfect fit. <laughs> so smooth. Okay, now I'm just going to get this up. Line everything down in here. Let's see if you can see. Okay. I just bottom it out against that wrist pin glue off my hand and then we'll just install this other clip it's not in there that There, now it's in. Okay, make sure that rotates here. There, that's fully seated. Okay, there is one piston, as you can see right here. There's the top, and it aligns with the top of the connecting rod. That's piston number two. Everything is assembled there. I'm gonna go ahead and do piston number one. One last thing I want to do before I end this video is I want to check to see if these new pistons will have a higher compression, uh, higher compression ratio than the old pistons. So what I'm going to do, this probably isn't the most accurate way to do it, but just for kind of comparison purposes, let's get my calipers set to zero here. And I'm just going to measure from the wrist pin up to the top of the piston because that will tell us how big the combustion chamber is of one piston. So this is 3.431, 3.431. And then on this one, the new piston, if this is a taller piston, then that means it will make the combustion chamber smaller when the piston's at top dead center. Oh yeah. So you can see it's different by probably about an eighth of an inch. This is 3.4. Five six five. Three point five six five. So with the taller piston, you have a smaller combustion chamber and boosts up your uh, compression ratio a little bit. So that's good. So that's we'll we'll say that that's a slight improvement. Um and I think with that I'm gonna end this video and then the next video I will be putting the block onto the tractor. So stay tuned for that, and uh, we'll talk to you guys later.